welcome back to I and I Studio. I want to give you a little demonstration. So I've poured the polymer medium onto the surface. I'm spreading it with a scraper to get it even. I'm going to take my little architectural drawing and just set it down, smooth it a little, little bit with my hands, and then uh, the excess medium that I've scraped over to the side, look over the top, it's wrinkling, and I don't mind because I'll put on layers and layers and layers of paint and paper. I will sand and those wrinkles will become interesting. Give it a little more on top. This is how I like to adhere my paper. I put it on the panel first. Then I add the paper. Now I can see there may be areas that are bubbling on the inside. If that becomes a problem to you, you can get a rubber spatula, a rubber scraper, really go over and over the surface to get all those bubbles out. Whoops, I just ripped a little bit of this one because I was being a little aggressive, but at this point, who cares? Um, also, at this point, the bubbles aren't as much of an issue because what I may do is go back into it and tear where the bubbles are to excavate back through the painting. And this is actually um, different paper. Will it, it has different qualities of adhesion. This paper is adhering beautifully. That looks great. Now, someone gave me a magazine from the 40s, and it's an advertising magazine. And I like the quality of the paper. It's aged. It's showing its age. I like the, uh, the text. I like the colors. There's a nice page. So I'm going to attach some pages a little bit randomly. Oh, that's interesting. I got a pink down here that looks pretty good. Is that going to be enough? Let's see. Let's scoop that over there. And this over here. This. And maybe one more page. I was listening to an interview the other day and an artist was talking about blocking out the composition. He also starts out making marks and not, you know, being loose and not really worrying about the outcome in the beginning stages. But he said that he blocks out areas of color and composition kind of loosely on the whole surface. I found that interesting because I find that generally I go for the motion, the, the gesture that I want, and that may be my, my first marks, especially when I'm using paint, but with collage it's a little different. Let's get these four glued down, and then let's go into it with a little paint to see what happens there. Before I get into the paint, I'm going to try some rust. Rust is made from vinegar and steel wool. I have combined these a couple weeks ago. I put about six steel wool pads that did not have soap on them. I combined them with 
distilled white vinegar. Let them sit and it's gonna make a rust patina. I wanna get a big gesture mark on here. Let's see what I can do. Clean it out. Okay, let's see. Now, to make it oxidize, I'm spraying it with peroxide. That's a nice mark. So now I have a little gesture. I've got the geometry of the paper. I have a little gesture in there. Let's try some paint now. I'm gonna get some house paint. Bear with me. I was talking to an artist the other day who was, uh, she does uh, torn papers uh, from magazines, uh, puts them in stacks. I believe she calls them paper stacks and they're displayed with pins on the wall. She said they had a critique the other day, and some people were seeing the content of the pictures. Others were just seeing the colors and the forms. I tend to be a formalist, which means I tend to see things in color and form rather than content. There should be some content. However, I like the form. I like the impact. So, um, I'm gonna just make some marks with some house paint. I brought two colors. These are those Faro and Ball house paints we talked about the other day. And I'm kind of keeping in mind the colors of all the paintings I'm doing. They're all related color-wise in some way. They're all related, as I said in the last video, with bold marks and with contrast. Now, I'm gonna make some whimsical marks. This is the beginning of the process. Let's just make some fun marks. Just a line of lavender. And going to go back with some olive green and I'm kind of going to make some shadow marks under these. I've been doing that in this series, just kind of creating these goofy shadows which sometimes work to lift the form, make it look like it's collaged and elevated, lifted up. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's pretty nice. Put a little bit under here. For no particular reason. Just want to see if I give that mark a little dimension. So that's a great start to this painting, and I'm going to leave it at this point because, like I said, I want to move quickly between painting and painting and painting. So let's move on to the next and see what trouble we can get in with another piece, okay? So because I already have the greenish color, let's just make some marks on a couple of these and see what we can get. I have some green here. shadow it. Just pretending I'm making a, a shadow. If a shadow was on this side here, then it would fall on that side here. And it would fall on that side here. Take it all the way down. And I've got a little piece up here. Okay. No real reason, just fun at this point. I'm, I'm getting a composition that's pretty interesting. I love this grayish color. Let's put a little line down there. How about some dots? I may um, decide that's too much, and I may go back and cover those dots up. But for now, they've Got a nice look, they're kind of relating to those. 
Then I'm going to come over here. Got the brush. Why not? Look at how interesting this is. These relate to those up there. So that's kind of cool. Let's accentuate those with a little of this lavender. Didn't do it any harm, that's for sure. So it's, at this point, just simple fun. Go from one to the other to the other. Repeat some more of these marks on some of the other paintings. Let's come over here. Now, if those are too defined for you, grab the scraper. Give them a little motion. Let's get a little of that green onto this one too, since we've got it. I'm not really dealing with much of a composition yet at this point at all. And it's just building up paint, quickly moving from piece to piece to piece, touching all the pieces with a little bit of paint. And if something piques my interest in one of them, I can stay there a little longer. Let's, uh, let's move down the line and see what we've got. These two pieces are really fun. Um, I went into this with a, a cadmium orange. No, it was a Chinese orange. And um, I mixed the color with matte medium, and then I poured it on, and I used my scraper to get that. I left this white gestural mark, which I'm loving. Originally, I had some green marks. I'm going to go back and kind of reinforce those. I like the movement of those. Think about your brush. This is a flat brush. When I have a flat brush, I can turn it sideways and make fine marks like that. Or I can turn it like that and make a thick mark. Then I can turn it and bring it down to a fine point. So got some marks there. And move over here. random, don't know what it's going to be, doesn't really matter at this point. I'm working some layers. I think that the elegance of these lines coming up is important. And they don't have to stay where they are. I may change them like that. Uh, later, I can go back, I can evaluate which one looks more elegant. Do I need all these lines? Do I need one, three, two? I'm just making lines, knowing I can block off anything that isn't working. I want to get the best lines possible. I don't always get it with my first pass of the brush. I had a teacher that once talked about master calligrapher. He can make one mark and it's absolutely perfect because he's got the experience of 50, 60, 70 years of mark making. He knows what size brush to use. He knows how to approach the canvas, how much pressure to put on the brush, when to lift up the brush, when to put the brush down, when to lift it up. She said, one mark can be perfect, but if you or I try to make one mark perfect, it would just be arrogance because it's a matter of trial and error and experience. We do get better, but it does take time. So I'm going to leave you. I've got a lot of work ahead of me, as you can see. Uh, I'm just jumping from piece to piece right now, making random marks, seeing what happens. 
Um, wish me luck and I'll, I'll see you next week. We'll talk a little more next week and I'm glad that you're with me for this process. I appreciate you keeping me company. Please do give me some comments. I love it. You know what I'm going to say always. Go to the studio, paint. Painting is a practice. Practice makes perfect. Thanks a lot.